It's motherfucking Thirsty Thursday, July 29, 2021. And just like that, we're damn near at the end of July. July is out. July is out. RIP headphone users. Sorry for the yelling. But, you know, I'm, I'm an enthusiastic character. I like to bring positive energy. Even, even if the situation is shit. Even if the situation is shit, the energy is always good. You feel me? Today's episode is going to be about setting up your boss. <laughs> I'll let you marinate on that for a little bit. If you haven't already, join the, um, follow the Instagram page. That's incorporating underscore associates dot IA. Uh, you can find us on uh, Patreon as well. You can subscribe to the podcast. That's Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, on Apple Pods. Um, and you can donate. You can donate directly. Uh, if you choose not to subscribe monthly, maybe uh, maybe you want to be outside of that, of those uh, little tier, that, that tiered system. Maybe instead of $5, you want to donate 500 or 5000 or, or or send us... Send us your fucking safe queen, you feel me? And we'll put that shit to use. I mean, you gotta either got to use it or lose it, am I right? Uh, you, we have <laughs> paypal.me, a cash app, and Venmo even. You can find the link somewhere. You're a smart guy. If you want to send us uh, anything, you could even piecemeal it to us. That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 956. Hold on. Nine five seven four two, and uh, that box is checked intermittently. Now, I do have to remind you that as a corporate cowboy, it is my duty to um, to be as straightforward as possible. I guess you could say. And now that doesn't mean I'm not going to omit some truths, but I'm definitely not going to fucking lie unless, unless it's for a good reason. You know, there's two sides to every fucking coin. There's two sides to every coin and it's good to be able and contemplate and uh, deliberate on them both. Um, my whole goal is to pretty much open your eyes, your sweet little eyes, and uh, remove the wool from them and show you that uh, corporate corporate is nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be afraid of. Corporate is, uh, is a person just like you and I. A legal person, I might add. <laughs> a legal person with a voice and disposable income. Now, when you apply for work, uh, you're probably going to work under uh, some type of supervisor or manager. And uh, this person, you will more than likely come to know as your boss. Now, you become an independent contractor and you can choose who becomes your boss. They're not just going to be um, set up for you by corporate. What's good about that is that you choose who you call boss and when why because boss in itself it's like a it's like an outdated like a slang version like a it's like an outdated slang verbiage but it still carries a lot of power it still carries a lot of both positive and negative connotations depending on how you use it, when you use it. It's two sides to every fucking coin, am I right? As for me, you'll hardly ever hear me call somebody boss. It's always going to be uh, by their um, by their prefixes. So, Mr., Miss, that sort of thing. And uh, that's only because uh, I got I like to keep my level of respect proportional to how I value myself. 
then that's just baseline, right? How I value myself. So I'd much rather be called Mr. Um, and not so much boss. Why? I mean, boss makes me feel weird. I feel like, uh, and this is just me personally, boss boss puts a lot of responsibility onto you. Puts a fucking target on your back. Not just for, uh, for complaints, but also for promotions. Also for, uh, for special attentions. And as you know, being a corporate cowboy, I'd like to be under the radar, behind the curtains, if you will, and pulling the strings where I can make things happen and not have to expose myself, not have to show my face so much, not have to put on a fucking act or a show. Because again, I'm not going to lie to you, but, I, but if I have to sell you the truth, if I have to sell you the truth, then that's what I'm going to do. If I have to sell you the fucking cure, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a man for special treatment. I'm just gonna fucking sell you the cure, and you're gonna buy it. Okay, that sounded a little threatening. You're gonna fucking buy it. So I rarely call those who I contract under boss. Why you might ask? Because I think boss has uh, has a way of both developing and destroying ego. And I'd rather not do that to my associates, those who I choose to associate with. Come on, man. I'm a, I'm a conscientious guy. I'm a conscientious guy. I'm a sensitive man. And I'm aware. I'm aware of the fact. I'm aware of what words do to a person. I'm aware of what words do to people. Especially words that carry weight and those words that are repeated often. And those and a word that carries a lot of weight, especially when it's repeated often, is boss. It gets to a person's head. That or it gets under a person's skin. And it all depends on the context, calling somebody boss. And you probably don't hear it a whole lot in common parlance. You probably don't hear it in your day-to-day conversations. A lot of what I'm talking about even now takes place behind the scenes in the work space. It takes place behind the scenes. Now, you can or I can choose to use the word boss for my my client let's say for for my manager for my boss i can use i can choose to use the word boss instead of uh mr or ms if i'm going to connote respect but also if i'm going to uh let's say delegate responsibility or relegate even you could delegate or relegate right because there's either a sense of accountability or there's a sense of respect more often than not it's both if I call somebody boss if I call you boss in front of the customer what essentially what I'm doing is I'm paying you the respect of being the boss and you better hope it's in a context where we're killing the fucking game where we're about to close this fucking contract and all we need is a is a little enhanced bolstering maneuver by by which we can how do I say engender competence in the client or in the customer and so by calling you boss you've already positioned yourself to be a capable motherfucker and me calling you boss positions myself to be in a perfect support role. The perfect support role, right? But that entails you being a capable leader. That entails you being able to close on a deal, to pitch an initiative and sew it tight. And yeah, that that requires uh, requires skill, requires ability. 
to be the boss. It costs to be the boss. You have to invest in yourself to order, you have to invest in yourself in order to be able and invest in other people. So you first have to invest in yourself, i.e. social skills, i.e. inter and intrapersonal skills. You have to have a little bit of knowledge, a jack of all trades, if you will, or an expert in a couple. And that's all, that's all context dependent on when the word boss is dropped. Because some folks like to play boss. They like to act like a boss. They give them like a, a piece of shit manager in uh, like a fast food. It, it, it could be any. It could be any fucking industry. But a piece of shit manager, especially one who has the power and ability to create the schedule for every other employee or worker, they will more often than not give themselves just enough hours to make salary and then only those hours that absolutely don't require their undivided attention. So who fucking knows what they're doing when they schedule themselves? They're probably in their office with their thumb up their fucking ass. But they're, but they're obviously not getting out there. They're obviously not out there getting more business for the organization. They're just taking solace in the fact that their salary is secure. Their salary is secured. Their benefits are secured, and they don't have too much to worry about, other than making sure that those individuals that they scheduled show up on time and that the work gets done. Right, and even then, they still fuck that up. They manage. They manage as a manager. They manage to fuck that up. So yeah, they. Some folks will like to play boss, but they don't like paying the cost. And those motherfuckers, there comes an opportune moment to call them boss. And I'm gonna le- I'm gonna I'm gonna let you figure out when that is, but there is a there is an instance where you want to call them boss. That isn't so much for respect, but it's out of respect for respect. It's like the coup de gras. It's like a mercy kill. <laughs> Calling them boss because it's what they wanted it's what they were looking for and so it's what they fucking got typically it happens when it's you who becomes the boss and you just call them boss just to rub it in so it's not to position yourself on the same level as them but it's actually to uh, to demote them on a social on a professional level on a, on, a, on a social, psychological level, even. And again, it's all context dependent. It's how you say it, it's when you say it. How you use it, when you use it. So, <clears throat> think of, uh, obviously, obviously, think of words as tools. And boss is just one of those $5 words That is only four letters long. (laughs) And when you pull it out, I mean, I know people who will do shit for a dollar. You feel me? I've bet a dollar on many items, on on many instances, on many occasions. I've put down a dollar. I've bet a dollar. I've done things for a dollar. And, and, And it's more symbolic than it is uh, an actual an actual uh, price. It's more symbolic. What the value of a dollar is, what it means to pay, and it's not just money. It's paying homage. It's paying respects. Right. It, it, it all comes back to uh, to to that personal value where I could easily not bet a dollar or I could easily not charge a dollar 
just do it for a handshake. I have, I know plenty of folks who are more than willing to uh, get into some action for a handshake. So when you say that you would pay them a dollar, they won't laugh at you because a dollar is nothing to them. They'll laugh at you because they don't need your money. Your money is necessarily no good to them. They don't want it. And uh, yeah, I mean, those, those individuals exist. They're a little harder to find, but they are not few. They are many. And they're bosses. They're self-made bosses. What, what can I say? I mean, I'll call them boss if I have to. Again, dependent on context. And it matters. It matters why? Because out of respect, when you hang around, when you, when you associate yourself with a circle of bosses, everything is always new. Nothing is old. And nothing is new. There's no surprises But it's always a pleasure to be around them. So, um, so the uh, social growth, the professional growth, the development is, is continuous. It's always ongoing. And that's fun. It really is. To be the boss, you have to value yourself first. You have to develop yourself first in order to develop value in others. And there are some people who either check that box or just fucking fail to check that box. <laughs> and those are the ones you set up. So either, so either <laughs> in closing... You either set them up to be the boss or you fucking set them up (laughs) as the boss. (laughs) 